the basic question for me is how do we go from football to therapy, if you will? Where does that transition for you in terms of your life? What happened? I, I think the nexus to uh, going from football to uh, therapy was really the defining moments that I had overlooked the majority mm -hmm. of my life. Wow. Uh, when my parents divorced at 13, and when that happened, I, I just, you know, did what I think every young black boy does when he doesn't have a father, mm -hmm. is you go to uh, the closest, you know, place for you. And for me, it was, you know, the, the football field. Not realizing that I was struggling with depression, mm -hmm. as many of us do as men, we hide in places where no one would see us, mm -hmm. but also we're being seen in some capacity. It wasn't until after uh, the second suicide attempt that I had that I really began to say, okay, I, I need to get some help. Um, but the therapy was the catalyst that would really bring so many changes to my life because at 30 years old here I was sitting in this white man's office and he asked me how did I feel and I had no clue of what that meant. No one had ever asked. What was the rock bottom point? Was it take me back to that moment? Was it a, a suicide attempt? Yeah I, I think the rock bottom moment was you know being under the bed you know when my godmother came in the room because I've been missing for all day. Mm -hmm. And um, and um, I had taken, you know, so many pills. This is where I was, and, and, and this is, is for somebody. I was in so much pain, I didn't care why I ended up. And when you think about suicide, when we've studied individuals who have died by way of suicide, when you listen to the patterns of what they're saying and listen to their thoughts, like, it's very calculated. And when people says, well, I, I can't believe he did this. Like, oh, he's been thinking about this for a while. She's been thinking about that for a while. Today was just today. How about the moment of conversation with God? Because obviously there's been a spiritual awakening for you as well since. Yeah. What happened? He said, you got to trust me, Jay. And um, and I'm in tears and I'm, I'm just sitting there. And I mean, this, this presence is just so strong. I can't stop crying. And he says, I promise you, I will use all of it. He said, there's a great purpose and a great call that I had on your life. And I just remember crying and said, God, why me? And something in me was so convinced that the promise sounds so much greater than the pain. And, and trusting him was not easy because it was me saying, I have to surrender. When it comes to talking about mental health um, and doing the work that you've done and that you're continuing to help others do, what advice would you give, especially to black men, um, with dealing with our stuff? Yeah. What should, why is this important? Yeah, it's important for us as black men because uh, we've been bred to feel that you know, we're just machines. I mean, you take it all the way back to slavery. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, the different systems that were put in place. So historically, as black men, there hasn't been anything in place that has focused on our mental and psychological, emotional well-being. And so it's important that we continue to not only just have conversation, but black men like us are seen. Yeah. For someone watching who is wondering practically, okay, I'm hearing you and I know I gotta do something. How do they begin to navigate the steps of, okay, I've never been to therapy. I don't even know what a therapist is. Where do I begin this process of getting the help I need? Yeah. Step one is identifying where it hurts. Identify where you can see where the changes begin or where the change happened. Number two is find a trusted space with somebody that has already earned your trust. Mm -hmm. And number three, giving yourself the permission to explore, permission to feel. And those are the three steps that I think mm -hmm. that can begin. Now, 
if those three steps lead you to therapy, great. But these are three steps that you could start on your own. And to the brothers that are watching, you have to sit still. So your soul, your body, and your spirit can all come in alignment to begin to deal with those things. 